Hi, welcome to the Catalan Tech Check, a video series where we will be going over the major features and functionalities of the Catalan platform. Visual testing, also known as UI testing, ensures that all the UI elements are located and behave according to the product's requirements, ensuring a high quality user experience. Visual testing can be done with the naked eye, but the problem is that it takes the average person 30 to 60 seconds to spot the differences between two images. At this rate, an average project with over 20,000 images to compare may consume over 320 uninterrupted man hours per month to complete. Manual visual testing is also very error prone, since there is a high chance that a person will miss details when comparing complex layouts. In this video, we'll be going over the main capabilities of the visual testing in the Catalan platform. The main benefit behind visual testing is to verify the user experience through incorporating screenshots uh, and to compare that to a baseline image. This is so that we can actually not only compare it on a pixel by pixel basis, but also test it on you know, how the information is laid out in front of us, as well as how uh, if there's any discrepancies between text values as well. We'll start showcasing those different uh, comparison methods a little bit later on. Uh, but for today's demonstration, what we're going to be working on is a uh, hospital appointment, uh, and we're going to be taking a screenshot of this image that you see right, or of this application uh, that you see right in front of here. And in the example we'll have is that we'll show you the different types of comparisons that we can take place, and also uh, how accurate we can actually show you those uh, discrepancies between a baseline and the most recent uh, screenshots from our execution. So for us to actually incorporate a visual testing, all we need to do is go into our given test case that we have already created, and we need to just add a specific uh, test step. In this case, we're going to be incorporating uh, take area screenshots of the checkpoints. Now to do this, all we need to do is you know, click the Add button, go down in the drop menu, go to the T section for take, and you'll start noticing that we have a different uh, different types of screenshots we can incorporate, right? We have area screenshots, element screenshots, full page, and traditional screenshots. What I want you to make sure of is to incorporate the uh, as a checkpoint uh, types of each of these. And once you select those, I'll just delete this one since we already have one created. Uh, once you have those, simply give it a name. And when this is actually going to be executed in your uh, you know, test runs and test ops, uh, you will actually start getting those visual testing notifications and start having that comparison done for you. Uh, to see those comparisons, all we really need to do is go into our test op instance. And we'll have to click on our visual testing uh, module. And then within our sub module, go into the visual test runs. Here we can actually start seeing a list of uh, recently executed uh, instances of our test runs that is incorporating visual testing. And if we were to go into any one that is unresolved, which is highlighted by our orange status here, we can actually start seeing that comparison taking place. So in this case, we only have one image uh, to go in. And if we want to see that comparison, we simply click this image. And we can start seeing a baseline image, which we have already set up. Uh, for this uh, for this demonstration. We'll talk about how to create a new one uh, after we resolve this instance. Uh, but we also have the latest screenshot from our most recent uh, execution. Now, like I said before, we can actually start uh, showing the comparison methods, right? There's three of them, uh, two of which were added most recently. That would be the layout and text, uh, te uh, text space. But pixel by pixel comparison is pretty much that. If there was, in this case, you know, uh, a pixel that was white, instead it's blue, and or vice versa, we would highlight that in red here, and we should, can show that comparison on both sides. Uh, layout, it's a little bit different. Uh, instead of just focusing on, you know, difference of uh, pixels, we are now going to be focusing on different uh, length of content, right? So this is going to be shown in text, in this case, right, because we have Hong Kong Cura Healthcare Center, which is a little bit longer of a, uh, you know, a little bit longer of a, a design than, say, Seoul uh, Cura Healthcare Center, right? Uh, so we can see that little difference being highlighted in red. 
Uh, again, we can start seeing the same thing happening inside of here where we have uh, Medicaid showcase in one of our images. If we were to zoom in a little bit, we can see that Medicaid is actually selected here, which is a lot longer than, uh, than the uh, value none. Uh, but the last comparison that we can do is actually going by text content. This is actually where we can start comparing the actual text values of what we see on the screen, and we can start highlighting specific ones that uh, were identical to our previous execution, which if we scroll, uh, zoom in a little bit, we can actually start seeing them being highlighted in green, and we can actually see the actual content uh, being highlighted on both images. Uh, but the ones that I want to showcase are the magenta ones. In this case, here we see the value is Hong Kong, but in the other screen, we or the other checkpoint, we actually see that it's Seoul. These are two completely different values, of course, and that is why they're being highlighted in magenta. So the same thing can be said here. We had the value none compared to the value uh, Medicaid. And uh, we can see this happening uh, across multiple different other uh, value points. Uh, as for the blue, that is simply uh, because of shifted. It's the same value, same text, uh, just in a different place than where it initially uh, was recorded. Uh, in this case, because Hong Kong is a, is a longer word than Seoul, Kura uh, Healthcare Center was actually shifted a little bit uh, in a different place than it normally was, and that's why it was highlighted in blue. Now, if we wanted to, we can simply just uh, ignore certain things, like we can uh, ignore the identicals, we can ignore the shifted, and we can focus on, you know, magenta if we wanted to. Uh, but notice here on the left side, we actually have this thing called ignore zones, right? So let's say, for instance, we don't really want to focus on the dynamic data shown here from different execution. So let's say, you know, this test case was going to go through multiple different types of appointments. Uh, we can actually ignore all of this uh, and actually make sure that we focus on, you know, the base format and text value shown on our application. Uh, to do that, uh, we would need to go into our visual baseline image, uh, but first we can easily pass or fail, you know, this comparison. And because you know, dynamic data was different, but the actual format uh, is concise to what we want, we can actually mark it as a pass. Now, when we do this, we do have the option of saving this to a baseline, right? So if we make an initial image uh, as the baseline. That's not the only image that we can actually start comparing it to. Instead, we can replace it with this new image that we can start seeing here, and we only need to click onto the Save to Baseline section here. We'll get a little confirmation to it. Uh, but also, you know, to go into that uh, Ignore Zone capability, which was a recent addition to Testops, we just need to go into the Baseline Collection, go into the collection for us. In this case, it's the Visual Testing Demo and we go into the edit image options. Again, this will have it, uh, if you have multiple uh, screenshots and multiple verifications, uh, visual testing verification steps you want to incorporate, each one of them will have their own respected uh, edit field. Okay? Once here, you click on the configure ignore zone and then just simply create a box over the text and uh, you know section of your application that you, want, uh, you don't want to uh, verify against. In this case, we are gonna just go over the dynamic data and if we wanted to, uh, we can readjust this, right, by just clicking on it and readjusting it in different sizes. Uh, but if we want to delete it, we can just simply select it here. Or if we want to apply this to all images inside of our collection, we can do that as well. Once we save it, this will now ignore all of our, uh, all the dynamic data and we'll focus uh, only on the information shown uh, that was not within that highlighted box. We would then need to save the changes. And just like that, we will be able to then ensure that our next iteration or test cases won't be raising uh, any unresolved issues. Instead, it will just be passing or, you know, uh, passing or be unresolved based off of, you know, uh, a little bit more critical uh, pieces of information that we have deemed uh, worthy enough to be outside of that ignore zone. Okay? And that is pretty much it. Again, a very uh, powerful but simple tool that we supply you guys within our Catalan platform. Uh, if you have any further questions on how to implement this or about any of our other uh, products within our platform, I encourage you guys to check out the rest of our Catalan Tech Check uh, video series. Uh, make sure to also get in touch with your local representative. 
uh, who will be able to get in contact with either myself or many of our other knowledgeable uh, solution engineers to answer any of your technical questions. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn a little bit more about Catalan, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.